All right, so this is the Music Spiral Light Sculpture. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to go over what it is, how it works, and a short little bit on why I decided to build it. So first off, it's 32 inches across. It's a 32 inch diameter sculpture. It's all wood construction with a translucent acrylic plastic sheet on the front. Uh, the reason that I went for the translucent acrylic is because I wanted to diffuse the LED lights so they wouldn't be these stark points of light with nothing around them. As you can see with this laser pointer, when the light gets in any one of these zones, it just fills out the zone really nicely and creates this effect that I was going for. So there's 162 LEDs in the sculpture. Each one of them is an RGB LED, meaning uh, red, green, blue. And I can mix any one of these zones to be any color on the spectrum, uh, all the way up to a pure white tone or any uh, variation in between. The whole project is powered by one of these Arduino Mega microcontrollers. Uh, these microcontrollers are pretty cool. They have a bunch of inputs and outputs on them and you can write uh, custom programs to do all kinds of cool projects like this. I uh, definitely recommend looking into Arduino if you're interested in doing something like this. So the program I wrote for the Arduino just converts music data in uh, MIDI format, MIDI music format, and creates these light shows on the sculpture. It maps each of the notes and the velocities to the correct areas on the sculpture. So getting into why I built this, um, I originally took music theory classes back about uh, 14 or 15 years ago, and I've always been interested in trying to visualize how sound actually works, how uh, when you're listening to a chord, how the notes relate, and uh, just trying to create a visual model in my mind of music theory. Uh, in music theory classes, uh, one of the most common tools that you're taught, visual tools, is to learn the circle of fifths. Uh, which is an indispensable tool for understanding key signatures, uh, how the keys relate to each other, and uh, how consonant and dissonant notes um, are related. So the circle of fifths is an indispensable tool. Um, another visual um, thing that you'll see in music theory classes is just a circle with the notes mapped around the circle, um, starting with one note and mapping back around to itself. Uh, but upon uh, looking into it further, you come to realize that the most accurate model is to map the notes in a spiral formation, and specifically in this logarithmic spiral that this uh, sculpture is based on. So um, what this sculpture does, what's unique about it, is that it's accurately mapping the relative wavelengths of the tones you're hearing in your ears on this spiral. So right here you have, uh, uh, this is what's the tonic note in this uh, music spiral. Right now I have this, this tonic note set to D3. So this is D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, a, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, and then back to D. But now we're D one octave up. So if I have this tuned to D3, as I currently do, this is D4 or D one octave up. This right here is D5 or D two octaves up. So what this sculpture does is it groups any given note in a, in a vector like this with all of its octaves and uh, does the same thing for each note around the, around the, uh, the chromatic music system. So. Uh, the chromatic music system is a 12-note uh, system uh, that's really been around for thousands of years now, since the time of Pythagoras, basically. Um, all music that you've ever heard is probably composed within the chromatic music system. There are some other uh, uh, music systems out there in, uh, in India and in other areas of the world. They use uh, different sets of tones, but uh, probably 95 to 99 percent of all the music you've ever heard or listened to on a regular basis is based on the chromatic music system. Uh, of these 12 tones. Uh, the caveat being that there's, there's only 12 tones, but there's uh, multiple octaves of those 12 tones. So um, this sculpture has three full octaves that's displayed in relative wavelengths. So starting here, the first octave starts here and loops around like this to here, so that's one octave. The second octave starts right here and loops around to here, that's the second octave. 
and the third octave starts here and loops around to here. Uh, so in addition to these three full octaves, there is a fourth outer octave that I added uh, that's just out here on the outside. Uh, this fourth octave is a non-scientific octave in terms of actually measuring the uh, wavelengths and uh, the relative wavelengths that you're seeing, uh, but I just added it so I could render out some lower bass notes uh, and so it would round out this circular shape that I wanted the sculpture to be. Um, so yeah, I just thought it would be an interesting way to visualize music. I've uh, input a bunch of my own compositions as well as some classical music into it. And I found it to be uh, very interesting uh, to be able to visualize how songs progress, how they'll start out in one key, uh, they'll add some dissonant notes in there and some notes maybe out of key, and then they'll, they'll come back into key. So um, it's an interesting way to view music, I think. And um, I found it to be uh, a good, source of inspiration for my own compositions already. So anyway, this is the uh, Music Spiral Light Sculpture. I hope you enjoy it. Um, also on this channel, I'm gonna be uploading a bunch of uh, more videos, uh, going more deeply into music theory um, and the idea of consonant and dissonant notes and uh, what makes a note consonant, how the, um, the ratios of the wavelengths and the ratios of the frequency affect uh, what, what we hear as a consonant note or a dissonant note. Uh, so I'll be doing some more music theory um, videos with this uh, as a demonstration aid. And then in addition, I'm going to be uploading a bunch of songs, um, some classical music compositions, uh, as well as my own compositions, uh, just to sort of show it in action so you can see what it looks like to view songs displayed on this. So uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in seeing more. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good one. Bye. Hey everybody, hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below or if you have any music suggestions. Uh, if you'd like to watch more videos like this, go ahead and click around and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, have a good one.